think I'm about to start now, ish. If we can get the last of the people in. Actually, do you know what I want to have you to do? Because um, this is about community thing, right? So if I can get people from the back to move up a little bit, because it also kind of speaking to the people all the way in the back, and that's kind of shitty. So it'd be really nice to get like, people up here. So then I can let that, as you, what I heard just before, that I, I came in, I was told that these, um, this room would be really very cold. So, um, and I was told I should not tell you that I actually needed your body heat, but I am anyways, just to make sure that we're on the same page. All right, that helps out a bit. The last one of you, all up in the front, all up in the front. Yes, you're not allowed to sit down there and hide anymore. That's how it is. No, sir. Up here. I want to have you there. All right. Um, welcome to this little talk about Drupal and the Drupal community, which I hope you know about. Um, this is I 20 years ago. This is just to make sure that whatever I say, this is how serious I am. Um, this is my whole name, Morten Birch Heide Jørgensen. Nobody outside of Denmark, Sweden, or Norway is able to pronounce this. So if you take it in the short version, it's that's Morten Birch. But if you can see here, it's very easy to make this mistake. So when people were games like wonder why I curse this much, this is one of the reasons. Um, I'm trying to be a nice guy. Um, I do have kind of a reputation of being a scarecrow for developers. I don't know why. Apparently something about markup and stuff. But that's essentially a thing we're not going to talk about today. I run a very small little shop in, in Copenhagen called uh, Geek Royale, which um, I have a little bit of stickers with me this time. Not so many t-shirts, but we have a bookstore where you buy all kinds of Drupal goodiness and look sharp. Um, but first of all, and just a fair warning, I already saw that one had commented in my, in my uh, session that um, I was swearing a lot, and yes, I am. So if you are afraid of hearing me dropping air bumps and stuff, you better leave the room now because it's about the Drupal community and how we do stuff, just to make sure that that's clear. So nobody, if you get offended, you ask for it. Um, I do bring a certain amount of, like, we call it biking love. That's kind of how we hawk people from where I'm from. Um, but, well, enough about me. Um, this is actually about you know, the whole ballad of Drupal and how, you know, how Drupal came around. Um, and one of the first things I heard about Drupal was this, that all CMS sucks, but Drupal sucks less than all of the others. And that's kind of a thing that I've seen in the Drupal community is very much a way we develop stuff. It's not like we are doing the best CMS ever in the world, because we know a CMS is kind of shit. But what we want to try to do is build something that's just a little bit better than all of the others. That does not suck as much. Um, and this whole thing around Drupal is actually, if you go, if you go all the way back to, to when we started, that's back in 2010, um, that it actually starts out um, with a spelling error. That's always a good way to start out, right? So Dries is trying, he's building this system called DORP. And DORP in Flemish means um, village. But when he registered the domain, he made a slight spelling error. So now it's called DROP, which would be a good name for a CMS system. Drop. Everybody can understand it, and it's easy to spell. Instead, he chose the, um, the Flemish word for it, Drupal. So that's why we have a CMS system that no one can pronounce outside of uh, Netherlands and Belgium. That's always a good way to start with. And, and as you can see, already from the start back in 2000, Drupal's always been very design oriented. It's with high focus of the visual elements of it, especially the first. Uh, a couple of versions of the site was really good. This is from 2000 in October. It got a major design upgrade like four months later. Um, and then about a half a year later, 15 January 2001, um, we have the very first release of Drupal because Drupal went from just being a website, a drop went from just being a website to actually be a system because it could kind of do all of these things. Um, and that's another very interesting thing here is how quickly the first couple of versions came out. As we can see, there's like only three months between each one of them. And, and one of the first things that I saw here was actually like this comment, it was a friendly but small community. Um, that's kind of one of the things we still have. I don't think we're small anymore. I mean, when you have 3,300 people coming to a conference all over the world, I don't think that small is the same, same name. It is still a kind of friendly, which I, I think is pretty good. And so what happens this year also is 
the very first um, issue that was that came in, Note 8. Um, if you don't know that, I'll come back to it later. But it's another one of these things where you can see how um, Drupal is kind of its own little culture. Um, it, it kind of the next couple of years we get uh, spread Firefox, Drupal, or we get a new release in, um, in 2004. Um, we get the security team born. Uh, we have Google Summer of Code suddenly come in. And so we got uh, jQuery into Drupal way back. And at this point, jQuery was not like the big dominant one. It actually more or less, we more or less not crashed their servers, but it was a peak that could be felt in the jQuery community that suddenly Drupal were actually using them. Um, a couple of years later, we get we get a whole redesign of Drupal because Drupal.org had to very much look like a nerd project. So now we get spent a little bit of, of work into it. Um, we finally killed CVS and got Git, which made uh, change a lot of the projects. Yay! It, it pays just so much sad. How many people actually used CVS? Did you like it? This is the first time in a session where people start screaming, I hated it, I hated it, I hated it. Can't wait. Um, anyways, we actually ended up in 2011, 2011 got to D7 released. We have a, an office in here in Portland. In fact, Drupal has hired people, what the fuck? Um, and, and Larry Garfield sneaked in Symphony. We have changed. Of, uh, one of the funny things in Drupal is that we have this property invented here kind of way. Apparently, we have now sneaked in Symphony through the back door. Actually, one of the only issues I've seen with only, only uh, it's like seven or eight comments on an issue queue that was changing the fundamental of how Drupal thought. That's pretty impressive. Um, we actually kind of also fixed the logo from this kind of thing, which was just a font to actually a, a real like word mark of a logo. So we began to do a little bit more professional over the years, which is both good and bad. The, the inner nerd in me is kind of missing the old times, but I kind of look at, like we get to look kind of decent. But I, I think here, over a 10 year old span, 10 year span, um, there's kind of this thing is what is that keeps people coming back? And this is kind of what I'm, people talk about cons and camps, I would rather call it the gathering. Or because gathering just sounds fucking cool instead of a meeting. And gathering, you can kind of like feel it like people are riding in with salts and shit, right? No? A little bit, come on, gathering, that sounds like a gathering. But we are going to a Drupal meeting. Anyways, this is the first DrupalCon in Antwerpen way, way back in 2004. This is the only image that's from there. Um, but they, it's kind of fun to actually find these things. This is Moshe who's still here. Okay, Bob, Joao, uh, Robert up here, and Dries. The thing is, every time you look at a DrupalCon picture, you can always find Dries. Just look up in the top of the image. That's how you find it. Um, they made a plan back then, total world domination. We're still missing out on this, but that's kind of like, that's the big plan. Um, then DrupalCon actually came to Portland. It was not real DrupalCon this point, it was only OSCON, but back in 2005. They went to Amsterdam then. That was when the Drupal community learned the hard way that you do not, on a Sunday, have a big panel discussion with 10 drug using developers. Because it's very hard to have that kind of conversation. Um, a little bit later, Dries and a lot of other people went up to Vancouver, about 100 attendees at this point. That's kind of a normal Drupal gathering. It's kind of big. Um, I myself entered the Drupal world in 2006 at, in Brussels, which I still consider this as being the very first DrupalCon because it was not a part of other conferences. This was also where I owned the nickname the King of Denmark, and the story for that involves um, an Irishman, um, French schoolgirls, and a huge amount of alcohol. The details of that will, can be told later on at a bar, but that was how I got my name. Another thing I saw here was actually this. This is a comment 3 a.m. at a bar in Brussels. That I am so tired of designers telling us what that Drupal looks like shit. And I wonder why. Um, for the first time in my life, I kept my mouth shut. Because I was in a room full of developers and I am a designer. I don't like things that look like crap. Um, Drupal looks like crap, but developers, when they see a website that they've developed, they don't think about how it looks, they think about their code. So when you say it looks like crap, they don't understand it, they think you are mean to the pretty little code. That's not what we are. 
Um, but that made me kind of starting another thing that slowly built up um, kind of an front-end awareness that takes a little bit of time because Drupal developers are very dear to their project, like everyone is. Um, so six months later, we were going to, to Yahoo. That was back when Yahoo was actually something. Um, so that was very exciting. We actually sold out a conference that sold out. We were freaking out 400 people. Yes, ooh. We went to Barcelona then a year later. And one of the things that happened there that I really saw as, as being a part of uh, this whole Drupal thing was you know, uh, Jeff Eaton at that point had just wrote the form API that we all love and maybe hate a little bit. The very first version of it apparently sucked ass. Um, so Jeff goes up at his first presentation in front of 400 people and gave a heartfelt apology for it that he had wasted people's time. And I was a little bit baffled by that, like, Wait a minute, you have used three or four hundred hours of your life to get this stuff to work. And now you're saying you're sorry to us? I mean, that's an interesting thing, because if you look at a lot of other um, open source communities, there is a lot of, um, you know, my code is better than your code kind of way of thinking. This is more of the, hey guys, I kind of tried to write this, I'm sorry it sucks ass, but the next version will be very, very good. Isn't that, if we begin to look at how, you know, when Drupal 5 came out, that was the best thing ever for about 25 minutes, and then we began to bitch and moan about it. Drupal 6, the same thing happened. Drupal 7, when finally views came out and we could actually use it for something, we began to bitch and moan again. And now we aren't just waiting for Drupal 8, because that will be the best thing ever. Because Drupal 6 is a piece of shit, and Drupal 7 is nah, kind of okay right now, until Drupal 8 comes up. Right? It's kind of a way that's just, it's okay to, we don't, it kind of seems like other communities have this idea of you know, my code is better than yours. We're kind of my code is the worst piece of shit. No, my code is the worst piece of shit. But let me come away up with you this. It's another way of thinking that I think keeps us kind of humble. Um, so we're, we're going to Boston, and at this point, we're suddenly 850 attendees. That was also where a lot of us figured out that there was this contributor with the name of Dimitri. Um, none really knew who we were. I came in to see a session about JavaScript. It was a 12-year-old boy. When you suddenly have 12 years old telling you how JavaScript actually works, you get humble, very humble, and begin to think about, what did I do with my life? But still, we gave room to this dude, and he's kind of pretty goddamn awesome. In second, and in second is, this is in Europe, in Central Europe, not Eastern Europe, Central Europe. It's a town that's the fuck away from everything. You have to go three hours in trains to get to this city. It's a university, it's very beautiful, very pretty. We were still 500 people showing up. That was where we learned that when Drupal people go out to have a drink, we will empty out bars. The first night at DrupalCon, we emptied out three bars. And by emptying out, I mean we are out of beer, we are out of alcohol. When you do that, you begin to figure out, holy shit, we are, it's just, you need a, an amount of volume of people to be able to do that. Um, so six months later, suddenly we're in, in, in D.C., and we're actually 1,400 people. I've never been in a room before with 1,400 nerds, and it did not smell as bad as you thought. It was actually kind of decent, but still we're 1,400 people. It, it is now when it's actually begin to be a problem to be able to do a, a shot of people, like having one photo. We saw it today, it's completely impossible. Still, I'm still pretty sure Dries is the tallest, by the way, but it's still completely impossible. In DC, by the way, another thing happened. So I started back in 2006 trying to be all silent about the front end. At this point, suddenly we have had enough front end developers in one room that was pissed the fuck off by Drupal. Literally, we had to close the door and not let anybody out before these about 100 people stopped yelling at each other in anger over Drupal. Um, that was when we figured out that, hey, one of we are open source, so we scratch your own needs. That was when we, for the first time, took over a whole bathroom just for front-end sessions because nobody listens to us, so you know, we scratch our own needs. Um, in 2009, as in Paris, it even kept up this way because in Paris, apparently, um, we had a designer versus developer uh, discussion on Twitter. That does not go well, by the way. That, it was fun, but it does not go well. Um, we did make people, again, 
from the thought down by getting it. Well, actually, there was, this is the conference where um, Semantic Views model came out. That's, yes, there was actually a dude, I was bitching and moaning about it as usual, and there was a developer in the room like, so your problem is this. Give me 24 hours. He came back the next day like, is this what you need? I'm like, oh, so I should just ask politely about it and make it as a, as a quest for a developer, they will do it. That's how, that's how it works. Sweet. Um, a little bit later, we are actually now in, in San Francisco uh, three years ago. We had 3,000 attendees. That freaked me out, by the way. Standing in a room with 3,000 attendees, that's pretty, pretty extreme. That was also where I heard afterwards the conference that we had the second highest amount of, um, of little items, you know, iPhones, iPads, iPod, all of these things. You are connecting items at the same time with the second highest number. And I asked, of course, oh, who, who have the record? Oh, well, that was two weeks ago when Steve Jobs presented the iPad. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. So we are a bunch of happy, free, open source geeks who gather around this project called Drupal. And we apparently packed as, at that higher number the same thing when Steve Jobs kind of presented the iPad. Holy shit. Um, afterwards, we go, we went to my city, Copenhagen, which is still, this is my favorite picture, by the way, of, of the Drupal community. This is, this is 1200. This is how 1200 geek looks like. Um, we actually ended up doing a beer by, uh, in, the, in the beer community, a famous uh, brewer, um, the Awesome Source. I actually just found one case of them, but I emptied out my old office. I don't know how it tastes now, but I'm pretty sure it's good. Um, I still think this was the best Drupal con ever in 2010 in Europe. Um, six months later, we are now in Chicago, and this is when we begin to think about Dru a, a, a kind of cult of Drupal that, that we have now Portlandias, Portland people getting married at a Drupal con. Like, what the, what's going on here? Another thing that also happened here was, um, if we begin to define what a hangover really is. Um, so we have the Swedish developer, uh, he got very, very drunk, Fable, uh, Fabsol, one night, and he were at the bar, and he had issues with the Varnish module. And the, more or less the wording were, I want to find the maintainer of Varnish and I'm going to punch him in the face. Okay, Fabson. The thing is that Josh, who is the maintainer of the module, was standing about two to three feet from him. Normally you would think, okay, here we have like men to men who are like about to fight. What will happen? Dum, 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 dum. The next morning, Faber wakes up and figures out he is now the co-maintainer of Barney's module. That's how you do it. So they're kind of like, okay, you can do a better job. Have fun. Go to the issue queue. Um, we then went to London, or they, they, Croydon actually. So London is pretty big. Croydon is the, sh uh, I think the English called that shite suburb. That's the right word. It's about an hour out of London. That's where they actually burned down the city the week before. It's the goddamn truth. They burned the motherfucker down. And we rolled in with a Drupal con. It was a riot. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I need some new material. Um, we went to Denver. The first time I actually met another developer's mom. She sits right there. Oh, yeah. I behaved. Um, in Munich, we, we, we went, we have, now, so the European conference is also kind of taking off. Mainly the reason I have these pictures just, it kind of gives me an idea of how big we actually are, how many people we have who is caring about this stuff by having 1,800 people showing up. We went to Sydney this year. By the way, that thing out there, that is real water. We had sunshine on us for, for four days. I had a coat spent outside with sun shining on us, and nobody got burned or anything. Um, we're in Portland now with 3,300 people. Um, if you look at this beautiful scale, it, it's, it's kind of, exp I mean, some people say, oh, we've stagnated a little bit. And I, stagnated, what the fuck are you guys talking about? We have over 3,000 people at a Drupal con. This kind of shows that we have some kind of volume. Actually, the thing is that the Drupal camps is beginning to have these sizes of Drupal cons. I went to Stockholm. There were 300 attendees uh, two months ago. 
We did front-end United with this and only front-end developer conference. When we did the headcount, how many developers are here? There was five guys that kind of slowly put their hand over the ears. We're kind of developers and we just want to see what this was about. Um, so we kind of grow into a, to a volume that, that begins to be a little bit bigger than anything that we are thinking about ourselves. And, and this is kind of where I begin to think about the cult of Drupal and why is it that we become this big group. And I think it's kind of like you know, the very first time you come into Drupal, that first time that you meet Drupal and think, okay, hi Drupal, let me see what this is. Then you meet this. This is all the decent systems. This is Drupal. This is how Drupal goes. And kind of you, you get hammered down. It's not like a wall that you walk to and then get hit by. It kind of the walls driven directly through you and you're then smashed down by it. But the thing is that people go, hey, you need help. Let me help you with that. It's kind of it kind of a little bit extreme that anybody would have a problem. Like, I think I have an issue with that. There's always some dude or girl like, hey, I know that. Let me help you. It's kind of a kind of like a base thing we have. Actually, the amount of people we have here. This is, by the way, Drupal Neck. He sent me this picture when he put my logo on his neck. I'm like, what? And it's a metal leg, Drupal Neck. We even have, we have songs. Can you hear it? So when this song came out the first time, we saw comments about this, and this made Drupal look unprofessional. And in my mind, I was like, have you ever been in a Drupal event? I mean, this is kind of as deep into our culture as we get. It might be dumb, it might be stupid, but it's kind of fun. Um, in Sweden, they actually have a band called the Kitten Killers. They play Swedish hard rock and kill kittens. That's what they do. Um, we had, when we had Drupal 7, we had 280 release parties. 280 release parties for Drupal 7 release. I mean, god damn. We also have all of these kind of sh um, shared memories of people. Um, this is two developers that is covered, so we don't know who they are. And that is actually $20. When it, we're guessing this was the bribe that was made to get some of the front-end code into the back-end. We're not really sure, but it happened. That's how the thing that goes. Um, this is from DrupalCaller. DrupalCaller is a website that pretty much aggregates all of the events that happened. I know this is, by the way, for you Americans. This is Europe, that other country on the other side of the pond. Um, this is the amount of events in back in, in March, start of March, took a screenshot of what for Canva was speaking at, just to give an idea of how much goes on. Right now, this weekend in the States, it's not that much because you kind of have this event, but it's really interesting to see how many events actually is going on each week. This is not for six months, this is an upcoming week. And the goal is kind of the same thing all around, that we want to have the best system. Um, but, but the thing is kind of, you know, um, one thing is that the code is complicated, but when we talk about community, it's, I mean, try all this complication with people instead. And by people, I mean, we have about 22,000 modules, almost the same amount of themes. There's one, by the way, one theme that doesn't suck. I will tell you later. What? I will not tell you. It's something with a ship and your mother. Um, we have six, 631 distributions, but here's the really, really cool thing. We have almost 20, how do you even say this number? I mean, I'm just a little Dane. I don't even know how to count to that number. 26,000 developers, holy crap. That's the amount of people who can contribute to the code. Um, this is the code commits, by the way, from this week. This is the amount of comments that we had. This is the amount of users. And again, it's a little bit hard to understand this number because this is almost a million users. That's the size of Copenhagen. That's the, I mean, how many people live in Portland? One? A million people. 4.6? 1.6. Okay, so we, we, if we remove the suburbs because the suburbs sucks, then we have a million, right? 
That's the amount of users we have on our website. God damn. And, and this is kind of where, when I talk with other people from other communities, they all go, with, hey, I'm using Node.js and just so cool, yada, 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 yada. They're like, yeah, that's all good, dude. That's the flavor of the day. Um, this it was back from, to the GoogleCon in Chicago. This is Microsoft that tells us that they are sorry for IE6. How, how many of you was around when IE6 was developed and we used to do stuff for it? A couple. Was it fun? Did we ever think that Microsoft would ever excuse that to anybody? No, they don't make excuses. Apparently they do to the Google community. That shows me a certain amount of good old school fashioned power, nothing else. We actually power 3% of the interwebs, which is a pretty good number when you begin to count out the amount of sites. That would call for a brofist. I don't know what the female version of that brofist is, Every time I try to figure out the word, it sounds so wrong and so dirty. So I will not even try. What? A what? A whole fist? The French American lady said it should be whole fist. Oh, it shouldn't. And lady fingers also sound very wrong, right? Okay. Um, actually, so let's call for a high five instead. I do this. Yes, I got one down there. Thank you. What we actually created, we have created this monster. And by monster, I mean this. We have developers. They like stuff that works. We have designers. They like stuff that looks good. Not to forget this piece of people, the DevOps, which are slowly sneaking into our community. I don't know how they came in, but they are here. What happened? I mean, cash, 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 cash talk. Jesus Christ, buy some more hardware and get it on with. I mean, how hard can it get? You have UX people. We even have the suits. I am in a suit just to make them kind of feel at home in the Google community today. And, of course, we have these, the open source hippies. Yes, they are all around. We have suits and hippies who can actually communicate with each other. Who have thought that ever? Actually, see, I've learned by being on the, on the DA board that we make kind of a now it looks official, right? The thing is that when I begin to look at that at once, I'm like, how many people are we? What is it that we do? Can we actually live together? Maybe not, but can we live without each other? No, there's no way around it. This is actually what powers our community, the diversity of the community. And we kind of all want to have this ownership of the project, and we get into these kind of, you know, I want this so bad, and it's, you know, anger-driven development. We all know about that, right? You, know, you have an issue, it just goes, fuck this shit. Um, the thing that made it work so good is actually we hug it out. It's like, okay, let's figure it out. Let me just go over in this corner and scream a little bit, but then come back and hug it out because we have a community. Having a community this size is not easy. We dream about making it better all the time. We talk about it. But it's actually, this is kind of a, where we go way beyond the code. We're talking about a shared responsibility. Kind of the thing that, hey, I know I'm this, you know, I know you are that, let's figure this stuff out, let's hug it out. Um, I was reading this book called Out of Community by Juno Bacon, and he talks about the importance of the community, and that it's not kind of the crusade we want to have, it's you know, to get people unified into one and make them to march together. Being from a Viking background, I kind of know that. That was how we took on England, France, and the States. We were just one little nation with a couple of hundred thousand people at that point, but we unified and we kicked ass. That is why we are the oldest nation in the world and have the oldest flag in the world. That's the Danes, by the way. The Swedes would probably say something else, and they are, as always, wrong, 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 just to make sure that's clear. And I cannot see any Swedes in here, so that's even better. They look special. That's how it is. So. If we have a million users and we have all of these things, you know, how do we decide on these direction? How do we do it? This is where the evilness of the Drupal Association comes in. Isn't this, this is how the Drupal Association is kind of in public knowledge. This is the Drupal Association. They are watching over us and they are doing dumb things because we don't even know who they are. Or oh, let me quote another developer I know that says, dude, I'll give Drupal a hand job. Actually, the whole course, do I will give Drupal a hand job in the bathroom at any time, but this is kind of a little bit shorter. But I won't give $20 to the Drupal Association. 
Well, I can get that because the Drupal Association is not here to help with the code. They're not here to make that work. They are here to help us organize all this shit. By the way, I am sitting on the Drupal Association board, and I am allowed to talk crap about them because I am one of them. And somebody gave me, I was not sure if there was a thumb or another finger here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Can I, can I get some help to get out of here afterwards? <laughs> I need three big men. Um, the, the point is that the association has nothing to do with the code, just to make sure people know this. This is kind of an idea people have. It's something to do with the code. Fuck no, we won't touch that shit. You don't think we have enough problems already? We don't need an issue queue for this shit. Um, the DA is basically here to make the machine work. And the Drupal, now, this is getting exciting. This is actually, the Drupal Association Board. This is how they look. I was trying to figure out who they actually were before I entered the board. Um, you will see there's a Canadian who sneaked in here. Um, but we have Red Chick G. Again, Dries is always in the back, always luring over us, always keeping an eye out. Um, this is me, by the way, loud and happy, loud and happy. Um, this is the board, and this is the people who make a lot of changes and discussions with the community. That's kind of what we do. We also have a lovely staff. So actually, if you go down to the bookstore or to the registration, you will actually see the staff that we have hired. We even have a booth this time at this DrupalCon. So if you go into the exhibition hall and go all the way down where the lunch is, there you will actually find the Drupal Association. And we don't bite. Well, I do, but that's a whole other thing. Um, we have a new ED, Holly. Holly is so, is, uh, actually the thing is, uh, the amount of the staff that we have that are women is kind of, for me as a man, frightening me a little bit because I'm a fragile little man flower. Um, so when I hear that you know, we're talking about the do, you know, the gender diversity, um, we're pretty much one, the Drupal Association is run by ladies. It, the women took over. We lost men. I'm sorry. Yeah. And my little fragile man flower, of course, have a hard time with this because it's actually working. That's the worst part. Of it. Actually, we are 17 percent women at this conference. That's pretty good. Here's the really good thing: it's 19 percent of them who's presenting. So this whole nah, the ladies not talking, they don't want to do. Fuck that shit. They're taking over, and that is a good thing. Um, so here's actually what the association really do. This is kind of boring, right? What the associates do, all the boring shit. What you do is kicking ass. That's how it should be. Um, the word here used to be on the server. We make sure that the Drupal.org website is up and running. It's kind of keeping the lights on. No, keep the fire burning. Again, back to the wording. Gathering sounds cool. Meeting sounds boring. Keeping the power on the web server. That is boring. Keeping the fire burning some metal in that, and I like that. By the way, legal stuff, if somebody fucks with the GPO, we, that's what the DA do, take care of that stuff. And when, when you run a Drupal clone, when you come over a thousand users, it begins to be a little bit hard to do that. I did it for Drupal clone, 1,200 users. That is about a thousand to 1,200 hours of work, besides of your normal day work, and by the way, getting a dollar at the same time. That means you're not getting sleep for a year. It is too big for us to do it ourselves just by the community. Uh, by the way, the DA is loaded, or almost loaded, or rather this. We do have some money that we want to give to good projects so we can expand Drupal because apparently having a 3300 conference is not big enough for us. We want more, 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 more. Code spending. You would think that a code spending do not cost anything or is easy to arrange. Well, it do because we need power, we need room, we need all of that stuff. That's another thing that the DA is helping out with. And planning. Planning all of this stuff, figure out which way to not push the project, but you know, push the awareness of Drupal. When we're going to go out having a Drupal 8 launch, when we, we kind of tried doing that with Drupal 7. We had 280 parties. That was kind of a thing that just happened. But besides that, there's no real like combined effort. That is where the Drupal Association comes in. Also, so it's not just one company who takes control, it's kind of all of us, or rather none of us. Um, I do know that in 2012, the Drupal Association did have uh, issues. 
I've learned now by being political correct, I used to say they were complete fuck-ups. That's not the right word. The right word is growing pains. That's the right word for it. Um, so, and yeah, I ran for the board to help out with these growing pains because what I really wanted to see was, was something like this. I mean, I want to see the Drupal Association, I want to see the Drupal Project rock hard because, well, I'm a metalhead, so you know, everything that rocks is good for me, and everything that flames, swords, ashes, and men in leather chaps kind of oiled up, which, by the way, is not gay. Just to make sure we all know that that has nothing to do with men towards men who look at each other and kind of air hump in almost nothing. No, it is not gay. It's metal. Okay? Um, the thing is that you, you kind of go, okay, how come that you know, the Dual Association had started back in 2007? It takes six years to kind of begin to work. Or one dude said to me yesterday at the bar, it used to be we didn't even know what goes on at these meetings. Then Harley began to write these small blog posts, and this meeting we had last week, there was actually live tweeting about it. By the way, I'm sorry to all of you Americans that I might insult you by comparing the age of my backyard to your country. Um, it kind of slipped out. A discussion between the states and Europe, you know, that other country. Um, but why do things take so much time? There is a reason for that. And if we look all the way back to how Drupal works, the very first issue, Node 8. What is Node 8? Let users cancel their accounts. This is in December 2001. Keep that, keep that in mind. 2001. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, I can do that. Um, so, most goes in a day later and goes, hey, okay, I will see, look at this, I assign this issue to myself. He do that. Well, a month later, it in progress. And most, he gives up. He just, and this is a year later, he now gives up. It's like, I cannot do this anymore. Um, we now, anybody else, it should be possible to delete a user account, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. But, you know, it then, remember the, the, the year 2001? We are now in 2009. That finally now it's ready to be passed in. So when people bitch over the DA not being quick enough to react, get back to the issue, crew people, and show us some progress. Because actually, this is the amount of time it took December 17, 2001, January the 5th, 2011. That was the point, the time when this was actually. It took 10 years to get in this small, tiny issue in. 10 years. So can we get like three more, more months to get stuff done in the DA and we will be pretty happy. Um, I think the whole thing is like, you know, this, this slogan that came up, you know, you come for the code and you stay for the community. And that's, I mean, I'm not in Drupal because of the beauty of the code. I'm a front-end developer. Do you think I'm, this is fun for me? Fuck no. I hate Drupal with a passion. But some, every time I decide now it's enough, screw this shitty code. I will now take my stuff and I will write an epic CMS that is good for, for me. Oh, fuck. I, then suddenly I begin to realize in my little head, I have a million users on this. I have 25,000, 26,000 developers with me on this. I have a conference to go to each year, to try to hear, with about 3,000 other nerds who love this system as much as I do. They probably hate it as much as I do. I'm pretty sure there's more than one dev who want to talk with Jeff Eason again about Form API and why it's not doing what it should do. Because if he said sorry once, he just said sorry all of the time. Um, the thing is that what we're trying to do with the association thing is actually creating this machine that can work. Or as the same developer who told me about you want to give Drupal a hand job, was that if it sounds boring, the DA should do it. If it's fun, we should do it. That's kind of the way. That is what the DA is there for. Make the shit work. And now comes the quick one. You know how you get 100, 100 points in karma? Membership of the Drupal Association. How, how many of you are actually a member? I'm speaking to the choir. You didn't raise your hand, young man. It is easy. See this? Become a member. I know you have to go to, um, how is it, Drupal.org, then write association in front of it because we make it easy because we're good at that, right? Yeah. 
we need to work on that stuff. Um, actually, the, the thing, when I began to look at this, I, I redid my slides a couple of days ago, I began to look at this stuff, and I was going in all this stuff about Drupal Association, yada, 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 and figured out, well, all of that really doesn't matter, because when it comes to it, we have new people coming in, and they're like, how can I help out with this stuff? Well, code sprints is kind of the way, you know, how do you become a part of this tribe? Well, you go in and you, you participate in code sprints, because then sometimes you will see this. This was Jen Lampton after um, Bad Camp this year. So we have a bunch of us who are front-end devs who have been fighting and fighting and fighting to change the theme layer. Um, and I said this little, will anybody know how much time I have left? Ten minutes? Okay, good. I will actually tell this story. This, is, this tells me a lot about how the Drupal, Drupal, how the Drupal, cult of Drupal actually work. So it's the first day of Bad Camp, and Bad Camp is down in San Francisco. I flew over because I actually wanted to work on this Drupal trick thing. And um, the first day I had a presentation that's called The Angry Themer, where I pretty much had put in all my hatred to the theme layer and tried to put solutions into it and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm sitting down at the hotel and eating breakfast, and Dries comes over and asks, hey, can I, can I join in? Of course you can, Dries. I now have to use for what? About 30 minutes. I will now hammer the dude down and make him understand how important it is to, that we change the front end system. And I go, I stop eating and I just begin to talk again. 30 minutes, like, <laughs> goes on about the involvement in the front end develops and all our problems and how we can track even more, yada, 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 yada. I'm feeling a little bit sorry for Dries. Because, I mean, I'm pretty much fucking over his breakfast over this. It just goes on and on and on. And he has, he has the keynote right after. And he just sits there and listens to me as Dries does. Which I'm still kind of shocked about. He should know me by now. I mean, just let him talk, don't listen. Um, not and smile is the system I've heard from other people. If when Morton begins to talk a little bit to us, not and smile. Mm, it works. Anyways, we come to the conference. Um, and Dries does his session, yada, yada. Yadi, I walk over to my own own place where I have my session. I like to be in the room first, and then John Orbin comes over and runs into me. Like, more, 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 more! Please come back. Like, why? You know, it's just a dream snow. And he goes, blah, blah, blah. Drupal seven, blah, blah, blah. Drupal eight, contribute. Yadi, 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 yadi. You know, community, blah, blah, blah. Fun. Isn't that you know how it is? And we all feel good about it. That's it kind of like my session. Blah, blah, blah. Diff, kill, kill, kill. Hatred. I hate you all. I love you all. Yadi, yadi, yadi. A little bit of crying. Death must die. That's kind of how I do it, right? And you have heard it multiple times. Um, I come back into the room, and then Dries, he commits trick to call. That is why Jen Lampton, who has been the lady who pushed us again, ladies are taking over. She had cracked the whip over us to get this stuff done. Me and Jen, I would, I would not say we cried, but we were pretty close. I had an angry theme session with a smile all the way up to here. Like, I am angry. It was very, very strange to do. So later that night, I, I get a hold of trees and go like, dude, what the fuck? Why didn't you tell me something? I mean, I pretty much, you know, I almost attacked you during breakfast. He says, without even cracking a smile, if I had done that, it wouldn't have been a surprise. God fucking damn it, Dries. I've used six years of my life to this shit. I've been hunting down developers, gathering front-end people all around. And he just goes, no, it wouldn't be a surprise. Thank you. That's apparently how it works here. And, and it came there. It's, it, that man is evil. By the way, we have a coachman because we does not have complete all of trick in. So on Friday, if you have front-end dev or know how to write real code, we actually need to have real developers on this, not just us who do HTML and CSS stuff. You need to come in and help us out. And I can see three of them standing right down there. And they will gather in the coach print on Friday. It's not an option. That is, by the way, how you get new people in. You don't, you don't ask them politely. You take them by the neck and say, you, sir, or you, little lady, come and help out. Um, no, so the thing is that in Drupal, we don't have any rock stars. We are all just roadies. And the, by, by that, I mean, well, we, had, we did a camp a couple of years in Copenhagen, filmed with a lot of people. Afterwards, it was those of us who did the camp, who spoke at the camp, who arranged all of that, that took all the chairs down. That's kind of how it is. It's this thing that kind of keeps us humble. I mean, if you look, if you look at the star status that dude like Dries should have, I mean, to me, it's pretty normal. 
I don't, I mean, it's, that rock star thing is not a thing. I mean, and I kind of like that. And I know that I have an ego the size of a small country. Um, but even I like that. You should not laugh at that. Um, no, so actually, uh, just uh, one little thing here uh, before I end up. So, um, this is three years ago. This is my daughter. Um, this was three months ago. And you know what? She ran my campaign. That was how you guys got to vote on me. I used little children. I have no more left. Isn't it more? I, I learned something about American campaigns. You know, you kiss the children, you use them at some point. Um, no, so I actually just want to say thank you for that support because that was great for me and really, really, really helpful. And maybe that's why I cannot figure out how just to walk away from this community because of the people. And that's kind of, the, I mean, in my mind, the driving force here. And, and that's where, no matter how much we are afraid that now the business will take over all of the evil companies. Well, if all of the evil companies takes over and all of us who is here for all the other people, we walk away from the project, then the project has no value anymore. Then no code gets delivered. On the other hand, as a developer, I really like to work on projects where I can actually go eat food afterwards. That thing, I don't eat just my own dog food, my own clothes. It's kind of, kind of hard to eat that. So it's kind of nice trying to get paid. And it seems like I heard one, one company said, well, we see this sponsorship of the DrupalCon kind of like our Drupal tax. We just make sure it works, make sure that all these devs can go on with the thing. So it's kind of a it's not a match made in heaven, it's maybe made in hell, but it works out pretty good. And, well, that is maybe, uh, well, that is kind of the reason why I've not had the balls to leave, because I can't really, um, how do you say it, um, I kind of need you guys. Isn't that how you say it? Oh, can we, can we get that? Yeah, exactly, I can't quit, it's like a fucking drug. It's every time you've been, you've been a little bit away from the jewel community, it's like, crap. I like to do this work, but I'm not going to Tubalcon. Two months before, fuck this shit, let me get a session and let me go, because it's kind of like this outlet of, of a shit ton of love in the room and a shit ton of these people who hate the same thing I hate, CMS systems, and love the same thing I love, CMS systems. So that is unfortunately how we are bound to this Drupal thing. And I am sorry for it for those of you I have talked to coming into Drupal that you cannot leave it again. So, the first, the first drop of code was uh, was free. The next one you take in the issue queue. That's how it is. So, um, thank you. And if you would like to actually evaluate this session, you can do it at this fine short address: Portland 2013 Drupal.org schedule. See, one of the things we should do in the DA is actually work on things like that to make sure that that's getting a bit easier. But that's a whole other thing. We'll take that next time. Um, so, with that, thank you for coming. And um, Questions? I like my session. People never have questions to them. All right. What? I, well, I'm pretty sure I know why, because I'm a genius. <laughs> That's, that must be the reason. I mean, so much man in such a little body, right? I mean, at some level, it, it, it must work out good. So there's just no question afterwards. You're all fulfilled in your needs for coming here. That's what I do, fulfill your needs. That sounded wrong. Yes, I'm a roadie, I'm not a... Uh, no, we no, not go that way. Anyways, oh, Jenny. This is getting scary. Um, <laughs> so I had a question. Yeah. You're talking a lot about community and community yeah. building and reasons why we should stay involved and the way that the community is evolving over time. Do you, what do you think is the next step for the community? Like you mentioned, the numbers in Europe are, are going up from like a thousand to two thousand, and in the U.S. they seem to be going up from, you know, twenty five hundred to three thousand. What's next year going to look like? Do you think? Um, well, the the kind of the funny thing is we're all part of the community. So, so giving like a number, say, well, the num I don't see uh, if you just say it on a Drupalcon level, it's not the number that's important; it's the quality. Um, but by going up in numbers, you also begin to attract um, other people. Right now, we have been very much been developers, and we now have a bunch of front-end developers. I even heard rumors of the project managers doing the same trick we did back in DrupalCon in DC, getting pissed off and taking over a buff room. The big, the big difference from on these four years is like, four years ago, we pretty much took it by force. 
nobody dared to fuck with us because we wanted to fight. Um, this year, it was done first on Twitter, and then you ping one of the Drupal Association, and then they go, oh, yeah, let us just find you a projector and a small room you can go into, and I'll be fine with that. So that's kind of the big difference. Um, I guess that where I hope to see the communities is one thing is growing in numbers, but also growing in the, the – one of the very fun things for me has been actually to see it grow on an international scale. So it's not only um, you know, Europe and the U.S. that grows that way we are, uh, have been. Um, it's going to be fun to see uh, uh, you know, uh, Japan grow, China, so forth, so forth, that way around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another question. Follow-up question. What is the DA doing to help grow those numbers in those international regions? Like, are you guys promoting sponsorships? Or so um, I was one of them who was really against having more than one Drupal card or more than two Drupal cards, actually. I was kind of like, screw that shit. Uh, and what we're doing now is we have, we're going to have three Drupal cards a year. We have one in Europe, one in the States, and then we're going to have the floater Drupal card. That's kind of float around and help out in, a, in, a, in areas where they have some kind of expertise or have done a couple of camps but need that extra boost. That's kind of where the DA want to go in and help out with putting in the card. The real thing we also want to do is actually helping out the local communities to build their camps instead. So, because if you roll in as a, as a, uh, as a Drupal association, just come and say, well, hello, China, we will now show you how to build a conference. That's not how it's done. I mean, the success of Drupal is based in the community. So what we actually want to do is make sure that the community in these regions can build it up. That's why we have the grants. Um, that's why we want to we want to make sure it's, it's going to be the, the success of Drupal is so much based on the community and the people. We had a talk at the last association meeting where we had this. So what was the, what is the most important thing you have experienced doing, you know, being in Drupal and Drupal Association and each of the board members, right? It was always something around community, 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 community. And a little bit though, it's also exciting to see it grow, but it's the people always. And that's kind of the thing that we want to push forward and, and help out. So when we go to you know, the Middle East, we cannot just roll in the, you know, the DrupalCon and the big drop and go like, this is how you do it. That's not how you grow a community. Everybody will feel kind of pissed off. So find the right people in that region, make them build it up, and go that way and help out with that. Another thing that we want to do is actually, you know, so in Europe we had had uh, Front End United, that is a Front End conference. And it's beginning to be a little bit too big for us just to do. So having a Drupal Association to actually help out with like, some of the logistics, like all somewhere to pay the bills, so we don't use my credit card every time because that's getting kind of scary when your PayPal account suddenly gets closed and all kinds of fun stuff. And you and a chick dudes dude owe each other about twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars for conference. That's kind of scary, and that's where we want to have to associate on it. Um, and if there's any Americans who want to help out, actually pushing for the United to the states, it is a thing we want to do. Um, we might want to just push it down on you because we are like that. Um, so, did that help out, Shannon? All right. Any more questions? Cool. See, and this, here's the last thing I've learned. I have a feel-good video as the last thing. Um, this is from um, uh, the Drupal camp in Manchester, actually. So, I will close that with that. Thank you for coming.
basically it's a perfect tool for allowing me to sort of put my ideas, the creative ideas into life. Um, it's you know, really powerful, it allows me to sort of express myself in the web. Um, and I think the main thing Drupal enables developers to create a much better project than they otherwise could have created. Drupal to me is it's a really good framework for building a really nice community behind it for actually, you know, if you've got a problem with the community you have something. So for me it means Yes, it was sponsored by the Drupal Association, by the way. So we're actually using money to make you guys feel good. We are not just taking money. All right, people. Thank you for coming. It's been great fun.